Welcome, my babies. Welcome, 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 welcome to Parkem Lectures. Now, I was used to be a very bad sight reader. Boy, 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 boy. Let me be clear one more time. I was used to be bad at sight reading. Like I was so bad at sight reading to the point that when I get a new piece of music, I couldn't even play a single note. But do you know what I was good at? Practicing. I was really good at practicing. I was very bad at sight reading, but I was really good at practicing. So basically, I was able to play piano really well because I had a lot of patience of practicing. Yep, I practiced piano so much I didn't even care how many hours I did, and I just came to the point where I became really good at piano. All I could say is I practiced a lot to the point that I actually can be better at sight reading. Now, I don't have the problem with sight reading anymore. So, how do you overcome the problem with sight reading? Well, one of the most common answers that every single great sight readers usually say. Just read a lot of pieces of music. Just read a lot of pieces of music. Just a lot of pieces. Just grab a random piece and just play whatever you want. But in this lecture, I'm going to be teaching you how to sight read pieces in a methodological way. Sight reading is exactly the same as how you read a book for the very first time. Like a virgin, touch for the very first time, like a virgin. Let's just say you're really bad at reading, maybe because you're really bad at reading a single word or you're not really good at reading a whole phrase or something like that. Or maybe your first language ain't English. That is why you have to read a lot of books. To basically come to a stage where you can basically can read everything. Same as I read. You must have the ability to read the notes on the score and understand what the music is. But let's just talk about the basics first, okay? Here, here's the music score where all these music notations. How many seconds does it take for you to read all of these notes? Oh, and you're asking me how many seconds it takes me to do? Okay, it's basically G, F, E, D, C, G, D, A, B, C, and the middle C. Yeah, basically you just have to know how to read these notes very quickly just the way I do. But that's for the pitch. Because so many bad sight readers worried about the pitch. But what you should be worried about is the beat and the rhythm. But practicing beat and rhythm, that is the harder than pitch. It's because you are only focusing on to pitch. Huh? You have to also consider that these other stuff is very important as much as how you focus too much onto the pitch. And also, 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 the three stages are easy, intermediate, and hard. All right. I would like to play a game. Nah, seriously, this is like a game. There's four kinds of levels. Easy, intermediate, hard, and expert. So let's start off with the easy level first. Now, easy level. You need to get a bunch of easy single note scores. No need too many complex, just single notes. Not chord or harmonic intervals yet, just single notes. You need to at least get these two that. Also, I'm a key signature. We have to do something a little bit easier first. C major, G major, D major, and F major. So here is an example of a sight reading piece. Now, let's just give it a try. Now, I have this new piece of music right in front of my face, and let's start to look and analyze this baby. Now, look at this big bad boy. All we have is four crotchet beats in a bar. Four, four. If you don't know what time signature is, then they basically check out the six lecture. Now, remember I told you we should actually understand what the rhythm of this piece is first. So let's talk about the rhythms. Now, andante means in a walking pace, so let's do this very calmly. Because this is how I would walk. Ready? One, two, three.
Wait, isn't this basically the same rhythm every single bar? Holy sh! It is the same rhythm. What's this? Is basically cheating. Now you have to understand the range between which key to which key is your limit. So first of all, we have to look for the lowest and the highest note. So let's just look at this piece, which is basically middle C. That's the lowest note for your right hand. That's going to be the middle C, and your highest note is a one octave higher C. Now, normally when you're doing like a children level Alfred piano practices. Usually, when you get pieces that are in a C major, your hands are usually in a middle C position. Now, when you get pieces that are in G major, your hands are normally in a G position, and your hand, if it's in D major, it's a D position, etc. So generally, you have to get that in your head most of the time. Now, about fingering, check out this episode. And what about your left hand? Ah, highest note, which is that top G in the top space. And the last bar shows that the lowest note is that G. Bruh, this is gone. Good. Right, that's too easy. Let's just, just, I guess it's time to upgrade. Congratulations, you are in the intermediate level. Now, the new updated keys will be A major, E major, B flat major, E flat major, and A flat major. But this time, there will be a lot of accidentals because there are either gonna be a minor key pieces. Now, if you don't know what major or minor is, go check out the second and the third lecture, which is about key signatures. And so, now we're on the intermediate level piece now. Holy shit! There are too many notes. But it's okay. It's not that difficult. You know why? Because it's going in the same pattern over and over and over and over and over again. Now, after you figure that out, you just have to understand the harmonic changes. We got some actual chords here. So how does this basically go? So this okay now basically you got G C G C F and got G C G C E flat. Don't get the E flat because this piece is C minor. And you got yourself a B natural. Okay. So. And then we're back into the same thing. And now your right hand has now an actual chord. So and we're back to the Alberti bass again. So easy again. Plus, this is adagio, so you just basically slow. Let's give this a bit of a try. Ready? Hard level is basically gonna be the ones that where you have lots of chords and lots of complicated rhythms, more legend lines, more wider range scores, and you're gonna get lots of extra symbols that you have might have not seen before. So definitely it is gonna be all the keys. Mm -hmm. Straight from chronological order. Also you're gonna be dealing with a lot of tempo markings and expression markings. We are going to look at a new piece of music where I should ask people to look at Oh My Gosh. Oh. My Gosh. Oh My Gosh. What the f*** is this?! How do I- I- how many legend lines can I- A, B, C, D, E. E. Okay. Then. Oh. My Gosh. What is this? Okay, th th that's a middle C. Uh, I got that clear. That's a middle C, and that's clearly three notes higher, so that is, um... D! Okay, gotcha! Now, how many accidentals... Oh, damn. How many accidentals is that? Okay, let, let me just... Ah, this is just basically repeating the same over and over and over Okay, okay, that kind of clears my head. So there is three bars repeating here, 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 except for bar seven and eight. But also, they added more chords in bar nine, even if they are using the same crap. Woo! Let's give it a try. You ready?
other will be the perception of an expert. However, the expert is not a sight reader anymore. It's more of a quick studier. Is studier even a word? You're an expert! Say it! The difference between sight reading and quick studying is completely different. So let me just give you a brief idea what's the difference between quick study and sight reading. Sight reading is when you play a new piece of music for the very first time. Now, quick studying is when you perform the piece for the very first time. Get the difference? No? Well, you have a brain of a goldfish. When you get the new piece of music for the very first time, can you perform? No! How can you perform a piece of music that you have never seen in your entire life? Hmm? You perform because you know this piece very well. So you would practically and theoretically know how this piece should be performed. But then how do you perform the piece where you don't even know how it goes? That is why you call this quick study. But in the actual examination of quick study, which exists in the ABRSM diploma, licentiate and fellowship, you basically get a piece of music and you can actually practice just a little bit. You can practice a little bit before you actually perform in front of the examiner. Yeah, that's basically what quick study is. So this is how you do it. Okay, now we have a piece to quick study. So now let's take a look at this very quick one. So it all begins now. Joshua Wan Parkin, and as always, take care. Bye bye!